Amen. God bless you, Facebook land. Uh, my name is uh, 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 Pastor Sean Henson, along with my wife, Pastor Andrea Henson, and we are the uh, assistant pastors of Covenant Life Church in Alexandria, Virginia. And we just want to greet you in the master's name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And before I get started, I just want to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day weekend. Um, I want to say a special Father's Day uh, wave to uh, my spiritual father, Apostle Jeff Herbert, who is our pastor, along with uh, Apostle Dr. Linda Herbert. And we will want to honor them today. Also, I want to say a special hello to our father, Apostle, Apostle Leon Waters in Versace, Indiana, in Christian, National, in Christian International Central. And of course, for those of you who do not know, uh, we are ordained under Christian International. And so, before I get started, I'm going to let my wife come, and she's going to give you some announcements before we get started. God bless you. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, I would like to also say happy Juneteenth to everyone. Um, it's just a great honor and a great day to celebrate Juneteenth. So hopefully you all have joined in some of the online festivities for it. Um, just before we get started, just wanted to let you know um, our website so that if you have missed past services, that you can go into our website and all of our services that have been um, videoed or live streamed through Facebook are available for you to view, as well as past services when we were even in the church. Our, uh, our, uh, sorry, our website is covenant-life-church.org. Again, covenant-life-church.org. In addition, we send out a weekly newsletter that gives updates to everyone about all of the events that's occurring and how to access all of our services that we're now doing um, via uh, Facebook or Zoom. If you don't receive the website, the, the newsletter, then please make sure you uh, submit your email in the reply or the comment section and then we can get that to you as soon as possible lastly i believe we have men's group it's going to be having an event next saturday uh, night at seven o'clock okay led by our own apostle jeff herbert and it will be on zoom okay so men um if you're interested in participating in a men's event it will be saturday i believe that's july i mean next june night. june 29th i believe that is no it's not it's not next Saturday, honey. Is it next Saturday? Yes. Next oh, it Saturday is next night. Saturday. Yes. My, I'm sorry. Yes. So it's next Saturday night at 7 p.m. Um, there will be a link for you to also participate on via Zoom. That information will be in the newsletter. So again, if you're not receiving a newsletter, then you're missing out on some great opportunities. So please make sure you put your email address um, in the comments box so we can send you all of that information. We also want to remind people that we just want to thank everyone for their giving, their tithes, their offering, the donations, everything that's been pouring in. But <clears throat> even though we're not physically in our building, we still have physical uh, rent to pay and everything else. So if you are, are seeking to give donation or if you are unaware of how to, again, you can go to our website at covenant dash life dash church dot org and make sure that you can um, have a variety of ways to donate um, via our website you can either through pay through paypal um, bank transfer credit card um, and there's even a text to give number on there as well so just many opportunities and we just want to say thank you for all of your support thank you for all of your participation and for uh joining us tonight and um i think that's it Amen. all right all right Okay, so again, I just want to say my name is uh, Pastor Sean, and I'm going to talk about tonight, since it is Father's Day weekend, I'm just going to talk about honoring God, who is the Father. Um, if you, Father, um, just to start off, that Father right now means Abba. It means, it, it literally means, it, it Father is the Father God, is the first of the Trinity. You know, you have Father God. You have Jesus the Christ, who is second in the Trinity, and you have the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about honoring God. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, and give you the honor and praise that, that tonight, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. Father God, have your way in this place, Father God. Let us decrease and let your Holy Spirit increase, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for, for your Holy Spirit who preaches and teaches. Use us, Father God, for your glory, for your honor, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Father God, 
for, for what you're doing in, in our lives, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for just keeping us safe, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God, for keeping us healthy during this pandemic and this plague, Father God, in Jesus' name. And even in the unrest, Father God, I thank you, Father God, that your glory and your honor and your love is covering us daily, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. So, Father God, we just stir up the apostolic and the prophetic tonight, Father God, in Jesus' name. And we just thank you. We just honor you tonight, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we're going to talk about honoring God tonight. And the reason why I came up with this, I had preached this uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but the Holy Spirit gave it to me again, and yesterday it just told me to kind of amend some things. And in this pandemic and in this uh, plague uh, circumstances and even in this unrest of uh, just unruly and just uh, racial tension, he just says that we just need to just take a time out and take a pause and just know that God is in control and God honors us and, and, and God and God wants us to honor him. And the only answer to everything that's going on is God. And so God just wants us to honor him. And this, of course, this is Father's Day weekend where, of course, most of the messages is going to center around the Father God. But we should honor, Father, we should honor God every day. So it shouldn't be to just uh, have just a certain weekend. God should be honored every day because God gave us life. He gave us the breath in our lungs. And so we just need to honor God. So I'm just going to talk about this a few, uh, just, just, just for a while and just uh, give you a few scriptures to uh, just honor him. So what is honoring God? Because I know that, you know, we say some things in the church that can be sort of cliche-ish where we say, well, you know, thank God that we're honoring God. Is honoring God just coming to church? Is honoring God just... Uh, just saying that I am a Christian in name only? Uh, do we honor things or even people more than we honor God? So, uh, you know, the Bible says that we need to examine ourselves, you know, just to see if we're in the faith. And, and a lot of times, you know, there, there are things that we need, to, we, we need to just say, okay, God, am I honoring you in my everyday life? Not just when I come to church or not just when I come to occasional Bible study, but do we honor God in our everyday walk? See, God, God really, he's not impressed if we come to church on Sunday. It's good that we come to church on Sunday. The Bible says, forsake not the, the assembly of yourselves together, as some have. But he's concerned on what we do after church, what we do from Monday through Saturday. Because Sunday, if you really want to be honest about it, should be a day to glorify him. It should be a celebration of what we, what we have done Monday through Saturday. So, what is our worth in the sight of God? Well, a uh, familiar scripture that all that everybody quotes that all knows is John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And, th and that's the one thing that, that God wants us to know is that he loves us. Even in the midst of everything that's going on, God loves us unconditionally. And there's nothing that we can do that can prevent him, pre prevent him from loving us. He loves us unconditionally. So he says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So God, God gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for us. And I don't know anybody who would, natural, or a natural man, who would give up their only son to die. I have to be honest, I know I would. So that's a famous scripture in John 3, 16, but no one, uh, a lot of times, quote 17, he says that for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. See, there's a lot of condemnation in the, in the world today, even in the church. And, you know, the Bible says in Romans 8 says, there is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. See, we have to realize that God doesn't condemn. Now, he may convict us, but he even in that conviction is done in a loving manner. Okay, and he uses the Holy Spirit to convict us. And even in that, he will convict us. He will convict us in a way to say, okay, um, who are we in him? See, it's all about identity. See, if we know who we are in Christ, then we allow the Holy Spirit to convict us when we miss the mark, when, when we make a mistake. So he says, 
And for God did not send his, send his son into the world to condemn the world. So if God didn't send his son, Jesus, in, in, in the world to condemn it, why are we condemning the world? Why are we judging the world? Okay? Then he says, but that the world through him might be saved. See, God says he doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He wants everybody to be saved. So that's why he didn't come into the world to condemn it. But through Jesus Christ, he came in the world to save all of mankind. And so we have to do that, and we have to understand that right off the bat when, when we're talking about honoring God. So what are we doing to honor God? And again, I start off by saying, does it mean that we're just coming to church? Is that honoring God? Does that mean that we call ourselves Christians? No, honoring God is, is, is having a lifestyle that pleases God. And that's what holiness is about. It's about having a lifestyle that pleases God. It's being opposite of what the world is doing. That's part of honoring God is holiness. Part of, that's, the, that's part of God. It's not just coming to church. It's not just saying I'm a Christian. It's not just shouting. Is, is, is all that is fine, but honoring God is that he wants to honor us in his lifestyle. He wants a personal relationship. And once we have a personal relationship, that's truly honoring God. Because that's what Christianity is all about. When you separate Christianity from all the other religion, it's all about a personal relationship. All the other religions, they have to do a lot of works and a lot of, a lot of things that they believe honors their God. Some of them have to die and be killed for their God, but we don't do that because Jesus has already died for us, okay? So, again, we're talking about honor. Now, honor in the Greek is the word teme, T-E-E-M-A-Y. It's, it's actually pronounced teme, and it actually means a price or honor or a perceived value or worth. So what, in other words, what, it, what, what it's saying is that God, is, God is, is, is asking us, what am I worth to you? Now, we already know that he sent his son Jesus, so he loves us. And so we, when we start this off about honoring, there are several ways we honor in God. But we have to understand, we're going to start off with a spirit of mammon. And the spirit of mammon and is a demonic spirit whose job, literally, is to prevent us from honoring God. It's to prevent us from our purpose and walking in our calling. It's not just money. A lot of people, when, when, when they use the word mammon, they think of money. And it is that, but it's more than, it's more than just money. What it, what, what it really means is it's a total demonic spirit that keeps us from honoring God, that keeps us from, keeps us from a relationship with God. So we're going to deal with the spirit of mammon a little bit. And so it actually wants us to trust our money. It wants us to trust our things rather than trusting God. It wants us to trust our job. It wants us to trust all the things of the world rather than God. So if we go to Matthew chapter 6 in your Bible, we'll go to Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 19, very familiar scripture. Jesus is talking here. He said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But, verse 20, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So he talks about, do not lay up for yourselves treasures. See, we have to be careful that everything that we accumulate in, in this world, and we have to understand that the Bible says in Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom, his way of doing things, his operation, his constitution. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing, the right way of doing things, and all these things shall be added. But even in that, we have to understand that those things are going to fade away. That car that you have, which is a blessing, is, is, is going to fade away and, and is going to rust. That house that God's been blessed you with one day is, 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 is going to go. And all the things that we accumulate are going to go. But only what we do for Christ is going to last. And so he says that do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in. 
and steal. He said, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. So those treasures in heaven um, is, is our relationship with God. That's something that, that no one can take away, our personal relationship with God. And that, that's, that, that's something that, that, that he's talking about. We need to have a mindset that, that, that our mindset has to be eternal and not on the things of this world and not, and, and not of these things present. So he says that, that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So in other words, what you think about, what you treasure, what you give value to, that's where your heart is. Now, if you give value to God and the things of God, if you give value to the kingdom and his righteousness, that's where your heart is. But if you give values to things, if you give values to your car, if you give values to people, if you give a value to, to your house or, or whatever things, then that's where your value is. And a lot of times, if we as a church, we've gotten Matthew 6, 33 backwards. It says, seek ye first the kingdom. But a lot of times, we seek ye first things, and then when those things uh, go astray or we don't have them, then we try to seek the, uh, the kingdom and the righteousness. No, he says, seek ye first the kingdom. And then if you go on in that same Matthew 6, 14, and Matthew 6, uh, verse 24, he says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. In other words, he's saying that when you put God first, then the spirit of mammon can't come and try to take you away. If we, when we put God first, that spirit of man's job is to take you away from God. It's to take you away from that personal relationship with God. It's to, it's to get you, actually, its job is to get you in the spirit of religion. You know, I preached um, a couple of years ago about overcoming the spirit of religion. One of the things that, that the spirit of religion does, and the spirit of religion is closely tied to the spirit of man. And one of the things that the spirit of religion does is basically it's a system that try that 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 will take you away. It, it just gets you caught up all in the things and all of the religious duties that it will take you away from your personal relationship. It's just like in the book of Revelation when when Jesus was judging the church. One of the churches that he judged was, was the church of Ephesus, and the church of Ephesus that's what was a great church. And the church of Ephesus did a whole lot of things. They discerned rightly and they did a whole lot of great works and they, and they had the love of God in them. And they did a whole lot of things at first, but then as time went on, that spirit of mammon came in and that spirit of religion came in. And Jesus said that you've lost your first love. He said, you've done a whole lot of things good, but you've lost your first love. Your first love meaning that you've lost that personal intimacy and relationship with me. And that's what God is, is trying to get the church back to. And when we get the church back to a personal relationship, then we'll be ready for that great revival of when the world comes in and we can uh, demonstrate the kingdom to them by the love of the Father, by the love of God. So you have to understand that that mammon takes us away from that personal relationship. Mammon wants us, mammon takes, takes us away from our purpose and our vision toward God. And that's his job. And we have to battle. It's a constant battle against that every day. It's because mammon doesn't want us to get up and pray every day. Mammon doesn't want us to read the word. Mammon doesn't want us to, to uh, speak in tongues every day. To, you know, to get that, to, to get that energy, to get that power from God. Mammon doesn't want us to seek God early in the morning or whenever we have a chance. So that's mammon's job. And that's something that we have to bind and we have to fight with every day. And if we want to go to that mature church, we, if we want to go to that place where God is pleased with us and seek God with all our heart, then we have to bind and we have to constantly do that spiritual warfare against that spirit of mammon. So... Number one, we miss our blessings when we don't honor God first in our finances. Okay? Um, Proverbs 3, 9, verses 9 and 10, and this is in the Passion Translation. It says, glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your very best, with every increase that comes to you. Now, why am I starting off with finances? Because we have to understand that 
if you really want to know where a person's heart is, all you got to do is find out what they're doing with God's money. Okay, now you have to understand, the Bible says plainly that, that God owns everything. Okay, God owns the world. He owns a cattle of a thousand hills. And so I'm starting off with finances because if we really want to know where our heart is, then we have to start with our finances. And so he says, glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your very best, with every increase that comes to you. Then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. That's Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, the passing translation. See, that's why, see, if we honor him with our finances, all the other things in our life, it says, will, will, will fall in line. He says that every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. So that's why finances is important. That's why we need to honor God with our finances first and, and honor God with our tithes, honor God with our offerings and our alms. Because once, once we honor God with that, then all the other things will fall in line. Amen? So another uh, key to honoring God is seeking the wisdom of God. Seeking God's wisdom is one of the keys to honoring God. We have to seek the wisdom of God. You know, my wife preached a message a couple of weeks ago. It's called, You Need to Get to Know Her. Powerful message, and you can go back and listen to that whenever you have a chance, go on our website. And that wisdom is something that if we seek it properly, we seek the word and we seek his wisdom, we seek, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, and in all that you are getting, get understanding. So once we seek his wisdom, then that's how we're honoring God. And so um, if we go to 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, we're going to see that uh, seeking God's wisdom is the key to honoring God. Wisdom is so important, and definitely in these days that we're living in. And so, 1 Kings uh, chapter 3, and this is about Solomon, when Solomon had made a treaty or alliance with the king, with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And he had married uh, Pharaoh's daughter and brought her back to the city of David. So God came to Pharaoh in a dream and said, and actually, uh, if we go 1 Corinthians, I mean, 1 Kings 3, and starting at verse 5, it says, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, At, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out and come in. So let me start right there. Jesus said when, when, when you come to God just as a little child, he's going to give you wisdom. He's going to bless us. See, we have to have that mentality, have that heart of a little child to come to God. And say, God, I want the wisdom. I want to know how to operate in your kingdom. And, and pride and, and a lot of pride. The Bible says pride goes before, goes before destruction and haughty spirit before a fall. So we have to come to God, you know, and come to God, you know, with, with not a lot of pride, but just as of a little child. So Solomon was a little child at this point. And so the Bible says, now, O Lord, my God, verse 7, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. So Solomon had a whole lot of people that, that his father David had entrusted into him, that he had to rule over, that he, that he gave responsibility over. And so Solomon knew, and just like in this time that we're living in, we need wisdom, and, and we need wisdom to, to, to just minister to people. Instead of, you see, the, a lot of anger and a lot of things that, that are going on, 
and uh, people use anger to to try to just to try to make decisions and to try to uh, think that anger is going to solve it. But, but but the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that 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 you can be ye angry but sin not, and do not let the sun go down on your wrath. And so we have to have wisdom to to know how to handle these things that's going on out here. And so the Bible says. In verse 9, therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge this great people of yours. Verse 10, the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anything like you among the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Then Solomon awoke, and indeed it had been a dream, and he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, offered up burnt, burnt offerings, offered peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. So again, wisdom is the principal thing. See, he didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for things. He asked for wisdom. And you have to understand that we are living in days where we need the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom of God in everything that we do. You know, we need the wisdom of God before we go to work in the morning. We need the wisdom of God um, when, when we just go out here in this world with this pandemic and play, you know, wearing a mask and, and, and doing the hand sanitizers and all this stuff. We need wisdom. We need to pray. We need to ask God whether or not sometimes he may tell us to, to stay in the house. Sometimes he may say, well, I want you to go left and not go right. So we need that wisdom to make decisions, you know, and I think it's, it's so important. And Solomon, Solomon, God came to Solomon in a dream and Solomon, uh, ad, uh, Solomon asked God and he told God the right answer and God blessed him. And we know all the things that happened to Solomon afterwards. Solomon was the wisest man and the richest man in the Bible. So as we go on, we're talking about honoring God. Um, so as we go on, the Bible says that when we seek wisdom, when we seek the wisdom of God, the very person of Jesus is glorified. See, when we seek wisdom of God, when we seek how to apply that wisdom, and understand that the very person of wisdom is in Jesus Christ. It's not in, um, in, in the world system. It's not in, in a quick rich scheme and, and, uh, and just, just uh, coaches and gurus that don't know Christ. It all centers around Jesus. So 1 Corinthians 1 verses 30 and 31 says, But of him, meaning Jesus, you are in Christ Jesus. So when we are Christ Jesus, we are in him. See, it's so important to know who, who we are in him and know our identity. And that honors God when we know who we are in Christ. Then it says that who became for us wisdom. So Jesus, Jesus became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So we have to understand that when we're seeking God, we're seeking the wisdom, the wisdom lies in Jesus Christ himself. And when we know who we are, when we know who our identity is, and when we know that we have to seek the person of Jesus himself and seek his face and have a personal relationship with him, the Bible says in the book of James, if any man lack wisdom, that he will give it to him liberally and he will withhold it not. So we have to understand that God, God is, he loves to give to well, loves to give us His wisdom, and His wisdom comes from Jesus, and we have the Holy Spirit in us to teach us and to tell us that wisdom. 
See, you have to understand that Jesus says the Holy Spirit testifies of him. And because the Holy Spirit testifies of him, whenever the Holy Spirit tells us and, then the, and gives us that wisdom, it's coming from Jesus Christ himself. And then he says that he became for us wisdom from God and righteousness. So righteousness comes from Jesus. Right standing comes from Jesus. In other words, the Bible says in, in, um, in um, 2 Corinthians, it says, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when we say that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, we are righteous because Jesus is righteous. See, and God sees us righteous because of, the, of who we have in him and because we honor Jesus. And because Jesus is our righteousness, we are, we are righteous in his sight. Then he says sanctification, which means to be set aside, set apart. The Bible says um, that we are to come out from among them and be ye separate. It means to be set aside. So he says, so in other words, sanctification means to be set aside. It's, it's, a, it's another word for holiness. So God sees us holy. God sees us sanctified because of the sanctification and holiness of Jesus. It's nothing that we have done. It's all what he, Jesus, has done and his finished works on the cross. Amen. Then he says, and redemption. Mean, redemption means to be bought back. It means to buy back. It means to be bought back. And so Jesus redeemed us. That's why the, uh, the Bible says that the redeemed of the Lord say so. And God says that we are redeemed because Jesus redeemed us on the cross. Amen? And so that's why we, we, need to, that's why we can honor God because of what Jesus did. And, and, G, and God honors us because we honor Jesus and because we've given our life to Jesus Christ who died for us. God says, okay, now I will honor you. And the Bible says, if you were, if God says, if you will honor me, I will honor you. Amen. So as we go on, Proverbs 13, 18 in the New Living Translation says, well, when we heed to godly counsel and correction, God promised us he will honor us. So Proverbs 13, 18 in the New Living Translation says that if you ignore criticism, you will end in poverty and, and disgrace. If you accept correction, you will be honored. See, you have to understand that uh, God always puts people in our path to help us in our walk with Christ. God puts, puts the fivefold. God puts the apostles. God puts the prophets the pastors, the evangelists, and the teachers. Their job is to help us. So there's no isolation. There's no, okay, I'm going to do my own thing, and I don't have to listen to the fivefold. I don't have to listen to my pastors. I don't have to listen to our apostles or our prophets. No, we need people in our life to, to correct us lovingly and to set us on that path that God wants us, okay? And so... He says in Proverbs 13, 18, if you ignore criticism, we need people to tell us when we're doing wrong. We need people to give us that constructive criticism from the Holy Spirit. And so he says, if you ignore criticism, you will end up in poverty and, and, and disgrace. That's the end result of ignoring criticism. Then he says, but if you accept correction, you will be honored. So understand, in this time, we, we can't be someone who, who no one can say anything about no, no one can just tell them nothing we, we can't be someone who says well i know it all i know the bible i've been saved 20 30 20 years 30 years 40 years what have you you can't tell me nothing no we always need to be in a place of humility we need to be in a place of where we can be corrected and be teachable we always need a teachable spirit and when we have a teachable a spirit that's when that maturity comes and that's when god can come in and mature us when, when we know when, when we may have said something that wasn't correct or we may have even preached something that was taken out of context, we need to know that, okay, if someone comes to us who's been saved just as long as we have or even longer and can give us that guidance and give us that criticism to say, okay, well, I understand what you said here, but here's where you missed it. And if we accept that, the Bible says you're going to be honored. So, again, we're talking about honoring God. So, Prosperity. You cannot have true prosperity. Uh, you cannot have true prosperity without the wisdom of God because it's all wrapped up in Him. Proverbs 8, 17 through um, and 18 says, I love those who love me. 
Okay, he made it clear starting off. He said, I love those who love me. Then he says, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Then he says, riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. So he starts off, he says, I love people. God says, I love people who love me. I love people who seek me, who seek my face early. David said, early in the morning, will I seek thee? And so then he says that when you seek me diligently, you're going to find me. So when it, it diligently, so he's saying that when we seek God in the morning, when we get up in the morning and when we say, okay, God, I'm going to seek you regardless of how I feel, regardless of how my flesh is, is trying to stop me, regardless of, of, of my emotional state, God says that when you seek me, you're going to find me. And if you do it diligently, the Bible says, and the Bible says, you're going to find me. Then he says, riches and honor are with me. And then, and then he says, enduring riches and righteousness. So he says, enduring riches, which means that it's an ongoing, ongoing riches, ongoing uh, uh, righteousness. So he says, but, but you have to seek God. You have to, you have to seek God. And we have to do it diligently. And the church as a body, that's what we need to do. We need to seek God diligently. Okay, okay, you know the scripture in Hebrews 11, uh, 6, where it says, it, um, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is or he exists, and he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So again, it, it all, it all, it, it's all wrapped up in seeking him. It's all wrapped up in seeking his face. Not seeking things, but seeking his face. And if we do that, then that's honoring God. It's not just going to church on Sunday. It's not just a good praise and worship, a nice shout, and all that's great. It's not just occasionally going to a Bible study, but it's an every day. The Bible says that he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So um, it's, it's, it's just like uh, my former pastor who's gone on to be with the Lord, Apostle Betty Peoples, always tells us that it's not a hundred yard sprint or hundred yard dash but it's a marathon it's an everyday salvation is an everyday process and it's an everyday walk where god is maturing us daily and bishop uh, uh bill hammond always tells us is that our number one thing uh, our number one mindset should be that we are to be in the image and likeness of jesus christ that should be our number one calling you know, to be like Jesus, to walk according to the way Jesus walked, okay? And so, again, we're talking about honoring God. Proverbs 22, 4, in the Passion Translation says, laying your life down in tender surrender before the Lord will bring life, prosperity, and honor as your reward. So he's saying, lay down your life. See, th that's something that a lot of people don't preach a lot in these days. How are we supposed to lay our life down for him? Okay? See, you have to understand that when we got saved, the Bible says that, our, that we don't belong to ourselves no more, but we belong to him. See, Paul says that, that our bodies um, belong to the Holy Spirit. And we don't belong to us. When Jesus died on the cross, he purchased us through his blood. And he redeemed us through his blood. So we do not belong to us. We do not belong to ourselves anymore, but we belong to him. So our allegiance is to Jesus Christ. See, when we was out in the world, our allegiance was to Satan, was to the world system. But when we came and accepted Jesus, now we are the kingdom of God. Now our allegiance is totally lead to God. And I totally lead to Jesus Christ. We don't belong to ourselves no more. And he says, laying your life down. We have to lay our life down daily. Take up our cross and follow him. Whatever cross that may be, we need to take it up daily, uh, Jesus said, and follow him. And then he says, surrendering. We have to surrender. We have to wave the white flag, as our apostle Dr. Linda always says. We have to wave the flag, white flag and say, God, I surrender all to you. Okay? Then he says that when we do that, guess what? It's going to bring life. It's going to bring uh, uh, prosperity. It's going to bring honor. And so we have to understand life. Life comes through Jesus Christ. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to God except through, through the Father, through, through, 
you know, so we have to understand life comes through Jesus. You know, one of the things that um, uh, Apostle always said, Apostle Lewis Grimm said, uh, he did a men's conference, and he says that we have to understand that this Bible right here, this is our life, but our wallet is our living. And so he always says that this is our life, and our wallet is our living. So this is first, the Word of God, Jesus Christ. He is our life. And our wallet is our living. So that's why in John 10, 10 and Amplified, Jesus says that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it to the full until it overflows. He said, I, I have come that you may enjoy life. And so even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of this plague, even in the midst of this social unrest, he still wants us to enjoy life. But to enjoy life, we must know him. We must personally know him and have a relationship with him. Okay? So, Psalms 107.32 in the New Living Translation says, Let them, he's talking to the church. David is talking to us now. He says, let them exalt him publicly. That means let us exalt Jesus. See, Jesus says, if you're ashamed of me while we're here, I'm going to be ashamed uh, of you when you come before me with me and my angels. So God, so Jesus doesn't want us to be ashamed. So we have to be a witness for him. We cannot be ashamed of the God that we serve because the other people, they're not ashamed of their God, okay? There are other religions that they're not ashamed of their God. So we as a Christian church, we serve the true and living God. We should not be ashamed of the God that we serve, amen? So he says... Let them exalt him publicly before the congregation and before the leaders of the nation. That word nation means ethnos. That word nation means all people groups. So he says, in order to truly um, let them exalt him publicly before the congregation and for the leaders of the nation. So God says he wants us to publicly acknowledge him. How, how can we publicly acknowledge uh, Jesus when we are in this world? By our lifestyle by our personal relationship. See, Jesus says that when he was here, he was the light of the world. But when he went and he when he died and was raised from the dead, and now he's at the right hand of the Father, now he says we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are the, are, are the people who, who have to bring the light of Jesus to this dark world, to the people who are going to hell. We have to be that salt, and salt is a preservative. Okay, you know, anything about, you know, when, when you're cooking food, that salt brings a preservative. So God wants us to be that preservative to this dark world going to hell. We have to be that preservative. We have to be that light that shines in the darkness. Jesus said in, in the book of John, the first chapter, that when light met darkness, it comprehended it not. See, when the light of Jesus and the light of the Holy Spirit within us meets the darkness of this world system, it has to flee. It has to flee because light and darkness cannot, can, cannot reside in the same room. And so we have to be a light to this world. We have to be a light to all this social unrest and everything that's going on. We have to be a light to the people who are suffering uh, with, with this plague and pandemic. We have to be the one that says, okay, we have someone whose name is above every name, whose name is above coronavirus, whose name is above racism, whose name is above social unrest. Okay, and his name is Jesus. Okay, and so we that we have to be that light, and we have to go out here and be witnesses to this dark world. That's why he says in Acts one eight, he says, "But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth." So he wants us to be witnesses for him, not just speaking in tongues. That's one aspect of it. Of, of having the Holy Spirit and with power, but the main thing is to be witnesses. So we have to be witnesses, especially when this COVID-19 is coming to an end and we know that the people of the world is coming for answers. It's important for us to be effective witnesses to them, not bicker among each other, or among denomination or among uh, our doctrine, but we need to show the love of Christ. We need to be witnesses and say, Jesus is the answer and he loves you. See, when the world comes in, they don't want to hear a bunch of bickering and a bunch of, uh, uh, okay, well, you belong to this congregation, or you belong to this denomination, or, or I believe this. No, they want to know, okay, 
what does Jesus have for me? And that's where we come in. Amen. So as we go on, in order to truly honor God, we must take up our cross daily and follow him. Let's go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. See, we, it's, it's important for us to understand that in this Father's Day and, and, um, and there's going to be a whole lot of ser uh, sermons about fathers and that's wonderful. So we have to honor him in our everyday walk. Amen. So Mark chapter 8, starting at verse 34, says, When he had called the people to himself, this is Jesus talking, with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Verse 36, and you've heard this scripture before, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What profit? What, what, what is going to profit for, for, for you to get $10 million and nothing wrong with prosperity, nothing wrong with, with, with having blessings of prosperity, but what, what will it profit if you get that but don't have a relationship with Jesus? What will it profit to have the cars and the houses and all the riches, but yet you don't have Jesus Christ? You're not saved. You don't have that personal relationship with Jesus. What will it profit? Then, then he goes on, he says, verse 37, he says, and what will a man give in exchange for his soul? See, God owns a cattle of a thousand hills. God owns everything. So God is not impressed with, with, with someone with a whole bunch of money because God created all things, you see? And so that, that means nothing to God. He said, now you can't come to God and says, well, I'm not saved, God, but yet I have $10 million. I have a house I, I have a, 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 a 10 cars and 20 cars and, and, and a house on the beach and I have everything. Those are just things. And God says that means things means nothing in comparison to, to your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. Okay? So then he goes on, he says, verse 38, he says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him... The Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So we need to examine ourselves and ask, and ask ourselves, are we being effective witnesses for him? Or is Jesus saying that, are we ashamed, are, are we ashamed of the God that saved us? Are we ashamed of, of, of Jesus who died for us, who was raised for, 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 from the dead so we can have eternal life? And the only way that, that we can answer that question is to get before God. And are we living the life that God is pleased with? Or, or is he going to say, okay, um, I sent you on earth. I saved you for a purpose. I saved you for, for a holy calling. But if we just kind of hide in the back, if we just kind of blend in with the world system, if we kind of say, well, I don't want to be involved and, and, and what's going on. I don't want to be a light to the world. I don't want to be that salt. He's going to say, you are ashamed of me. See, Paul said it uh, clearly in Romans 1. He said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection. He says, for it is the power of God to them that believe, to the Jew and to the Greek. So we have to understand that, that we have to live a life so God can be pleased with us. So God can say, well, I know that, that, that when we close our eyes and, 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 and we breathe our last breath and we stand before him, he can say, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over, you've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. But we don't want to hear those words saying that, I, that, that you were ashamed of me. You didn't live that life that pleased me. And so that's honoring God. And another thing that we, we talked about by honoring God is that, and this is all nothing new, you've all heard this before, is we honor God by honoring our parents. Now we have to understand that our parents are not perfect, but neither are we. Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3 in the New Living Translation says, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. 
See, it's just the right thing to do to honor our parents. It's the right thing to do. Then it says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. That's And, it, and that's um, sharing from the commandments in Exodus. But you have to understand that he says it's the first commandment with a promise. So, And I'm just convinced that a lot of times people's lives are cut short because they don't honor their parents. And we need to honor our parents, no matter what they did. They, and, of course, you know, no one has perfect parents. We've all had parents that, 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 that have missed the mark and, that, and that's done some things. But we still have to honor them. And he promised us. He said there's a promise. He said if we honor them, then things will go well with you. Then he says you will have long life. All of us want long life. All of us want a long, prosperous, healthy life. But, we, but a lot of times we miss this scripture. Part of honoring God is honoring our parents. And God is adamant in saying that we must honor our parents. We must give honor to them. It could be you, you, that they may have done things to, to you that and they may have gone on to be with the Lord. And you may have to go and, and say, okay, well, you may have to forgive them. There may be some unforgiveness in your heart. Whatever you have to do to honor them, honor them. And God says, if you honor your parents, then I'm going to give you a, a, a long life on this earth. And so we have to be uh, careful about pride. I talked about it earlier about how pride goes before a destruction and a hearty spirit before a fall. Pride and self-exaltations, uh, a self-centeredness, keeps us from fully honoring God. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. And see, we, we have to... These are the days where um, I heard... Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, preachers on Facebook, and there, there are a lot of things going on, and there are a lot of people preaching some great things. And so Daniel chapter 4, we have to understand that, 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 that pride, pride will stop, stop us from honoring God all the time. Pride and self-centeredness will stop us all the time from honoring God. So in Daniel chapter 4, now this is um, Nebuchadnezzar, and this is when uh, Nebuchadnezzar became the king. And verse 28 says, all this came upon, now you have to understand that Nebuchadnezzar, uh, God had blessed them with, with, with riches, and, and God had blessed them with, with, with a whole lot of great things. He talked about things. And so... But there was a prophet who said that if you don't honor God about what God has blessed you with, he says that, 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 that the uh, prophet came and says that they shall drive you for men and your dwelling, verse 25, he says, they shall drive you for men and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And in so much as they, get, as they gave the command to leave the stump and the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lifting of your prosperity. So you have to understand God had blessed this man. God had blessed this king. But the prophet came. That's why it's so important to, to heed the word of the prophetic. That's, that's why we need the apostles. We need the prophetic word. Verse 28 says, All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, and at the end of the 12 months he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I, notice he said, I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. See, how many times do, do people think that what they got in life, they did it, okay? He said what I did. And 31 says, while the, word, while the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. 
They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and it gives it to whomever it chooses. That very hour, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. See, I understand God knows how to get your attention. Okay? And he uses prophets a lot of times to get, to get our attention. Okay? And so, but that pride. That, that self-centeredness, that self-exaltation, saying that I did, I did everything. I got this prosperity. I got everything. I got this ministry. I'm the one who got everything. No. God, sometimes God had to humble, had, had, had to humble him. And, and you don't want God to humble you. That's why the Bible says humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God. And in due season, he will exalt you. You don't want God to humble you. You want to humble yourselves before him. Verse 34 says, and at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. Okay, now he got it right at the end, but understand that if he would have just acknowledged God, if he would just listen to the prophetic word that came from the pro prophet, he wouldn't have gone through that. Sometimes if we just listen to the prophetic word, then we don't have to go through the things that we have to go through. We don't have to go through that, 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 that trial, that unnecessary trial. Now, we don't have to go through trials and tribulations in life, but sometimes it's a, it's a trial that comes to us unnecessary because we didn't listen to that prophetic word. Amen? So he says, For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Verse 35, All the inhabitants of the earth are, rep are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, no one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? And so, again, pride pride, and self-exaltation will keep you from honoring God. Pride is such a sneaky, demonic spirit. And that's something we have to battle with along with the spirit of religion. We have to, and like, along with the spirit of man, we have to battle with those demons daily. Pride. You know, well, I've been saved for 20, 30 years. I know the whole Bible. I read the whole Bible. Well, but you have to understand the Bible is pregnant with, with things. You can read things 10 times and God can give you something new. See, the scripture said knowledge in uh, 1 Corinthians 8, the scripture says knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. So you can't say that, okay, just because you've read the Bible cover to cover, that you know it all. We're all learning. And I said earlier, we need to have a teachable spirit so God can continue to mature us into, in, in, into his son, into the, the way uh, Jesus came and walked in this earth because we are chasing after him, amen? And we want to live like him. He is our example, amen? And so, as I go on, God, God's objective, wants, God wants us to honor him and bless him every single day. Every single day, God wants to, God wants to bless us. Not just when we come to church, not just on occasional Bible study. In uh, the book of Psalm 71, verses 5 through 8, and this is the living Bible translation, it says, O Lord, you alone are my hope. See, God is our hope. You know, the world is not our hope. You know, uh, 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 gurus and worldly gurus and worldly coaches and worldly uh, 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 stuff is not our hope. Okay, he says... Again, he says, O oh Lord, you alone are my hope. I trusted you from childhood. See, David acknowledged. That's why God said he was a man after, after my own heart. Because he, God knew, even when he messed up, he knew to come back to God. Because he knew that that's where my blessings come from. And, and he knew that God had blessed him and God was still watching over him even from childhood. And so he says, yes, you have been with me from birth and have helped me constantly. No wonder I am always praising you. My success, and at which so many stand amazed, is because you are my mighty protector. So David was saying that everything that, uh, that that's come to me, all the battles and all the stuff that I've fought, even the things, even when I missed the mark and I came back to you, he says, you were always there. You, you have been my protector. You have been my Jehovah Nisi. You, you've been my banner. You've been my Jehovah Sabaoth. You've been there. Even when I missed the mark, even when I messed up, David said you was always there. And that's what God is telling us. 
even when we mess up, even when we when when we miss the mark and, and we make mistakes, God is still there. And God doesn't again, like like I said earlier, God doesn't condemn us, but He will convict us to to tell us who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so David went on, he says that that all day long I praise and honor you, O God, for all that you have done for me. Our greatest reward and joy from God is when we lay down our lives and follow Jesus. That's our greatest reward. John chapter chapter 12. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And see, these are things that, that, that we learned, me, me and my, my wife, Pastor Andrea, we learned this from my former church. We have to lay down our lives. Lay down our lives. John chapter 12, starting at verse uh, 20, it says, uh, Now there were certain Greeks. John chapter 12, verse 20, it says, Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethesda of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. See, we have to die to ourselves in order for, for, for God to be glorified. Okay? Then he says, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Verse 26, if anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Where I am, there my servant will be also. When we obey, Apostle Tim Hammond says that the kingdom of God is where we hear and obey the voice of God. So he says, where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. If in verse 26, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. So it all, it, it all boils down to, are we willing to die? Are we willing to lay, are we willing to lay down our life for the sake of the kingdom? Okay, so that's the bottom line when we talk about honoring God. So he says, if anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. Well, how do you serve him? By laying down your life for the sake of him, for the sake of the kingdom of God. Amen. So the last thing as I wrap up, and I want to thank God for everybody on Facebook. I want to thank God for our pastors and all, everyone who's tuning in. And so are we honoring our leaders? Are we honoring the people who, who God put over our life? See, and I say that to say because there are a lot of um, people who talk about their pastors, who talk about their leaders. Well, our leaders are not perfect. They are human just like we are. But there was a reason why God put them over our life. Everyone needs a pastor. Everyone needs a spiritual oversight. Okay, just like in Ephesians 4.11, I always talk about, and he gave some apostles, he gave some prophets, he gave some pastors, evangelists, and teachers for the work of the ministry. So, you know, so we have to understand that when we talk about our pastors, talk about our leaders, and, and think that, oh, well, you know, they put on their pants just, just like we do. Well, we have to understand that there's a reason why that, 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 that God put them over our lives. We have to honor our leaders. We have to honor our, our, our pastors. We have to honor our, the people who God puts over us because when we honor them, God will honor us. Amen? The scripture says in Hebrews 13, 17, in the Passion Translation, it says, Obey your spiritual leaders and recognize their authority, for they keep watch over your soul without resting since they, now watch this, since they will have to give an account to God for their work. Amen. They have to give an account. And so that's why it's so important to pray for them on a daily basis, to lift them up, not talk about them and not, and, and, and because if you talk about them sooner or later, guess what happens? That, that, that Jezebel spirit will come in and to think that you can do it better than they can. Well, if you could do it better than they, then God would have put you over them. Okay? 
So he says that they, they, they will have to give account to God for their work. So it will benefit you when you make their work a pleasure and not a heavy burden. See, you have to understand that when we pray for them, when we honor our leaders, when we lift them up in prayer, when, when, when we understand to them, when we submit to their, when, rec when we recognize their authority, guess what? Their work is not a burden, but it's, but, but it's a pleasure to God. And then God will honor us for honoring them. See, Paul said it. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate God. Follow me as I follow Christ. Okay? So th that, that, that's biblical. And as I end, the Bible says it is our duties as Christians to honor God as well as all men. So among all this social unrest, all this, this uh, racial tension, and everything that's going on, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.17, it says, honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. And our king is Jesus. So it says, honor all people. Remember in Acts 17, verse 25 and 26, the Bible says that he made us out of one blood. We came from one blood, meaning Adam. And so we are all one in him. There's only one race. It's the human race. Okay? And so he says, honor all people. Love the brotherhood. First of all, as a church body, we have to love our brothers and sisters in Christ before we can love the world. Because if we're bickering among ourselves and bickering among um, just we can't even get along with our own brothers and sisters in Christ, how are we supposed to love the world who don't know Jesus, who are going out here and, and, and under the guise of Satan? Under, uh, and so we have to love the brotherhood, love the sisterhood, love our brothers and sisters in the Lord first. Then... When, when the world and when the people of the world come in, then we can show them the love of Christ as, as they see us love one another. See, Jesus said it plainly in John 13. He says, a new commandment I have given you that you love one another as I have loved you. He said, by this you are, my, you are made my disciples. In other words, he says that if we love our brothers and sisters in Christ, then he says and understand that I love you he says, love them just as I love you. Then you are made my disciples by the love that you have for one another. He says, it's a new commandment I've given you. Okay? Everybody talks about, well, I'm not under the law. I'm, I'm not under the commandments. Well, we're under the commandment of love. We are, all, we, we are all still under the commandment. We, I know we're under grace, but we are under the commandment of love. We are to love one another. That's why Paul says in Romans 13, owe no man anything but to love him. Amen. So we need to love one another. Okay? And so we have to understand that as I close, we as the church must get ourselves ready for the soon and coming king. In order for that to happen, we have to love one another. We have to mature. We have to allow the fivefold ministries, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors, the evangelists to mature us to give us that word, to, to mature us in the ministry, to activate us in our gifts and our calling and whatever God has called us to do and to apostolically send us out into where God has called us to be. Understand that, that we all have a vision. The Bible says, and Apostle Linda talked about, Dr. Linda talked about vision. The Bible says that without a vision, the people perish. But happy is he that keepeth the law. And in, in another translation says, without a prophetic revelation, we have to seek his face. We have to seek that prophetic revelation and seek that, that, that rhema and logos word that's in our spirit so God can speak to us. We have to hear and obey his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and, and a stranger they will not follow. And so we have to hear and obey his voice because when we hear and obey his voice, that's where the kingdom is. Okay. And, the, and Jesus says that until the kingdom of God, the, the gospel of the kingdom is preached in the entire world, then the, then the end will come. See, the end's not going to come. See, you know, a lot of people saying, well, all this pandemic and everything that Jesus is on his way, and he is, and, and he's coming very soon. But the gospel of the kingdom must be preached first in all the world. And, and, and he says that in Matthew 24, verses 14, and he says, and then the end shall come. 
And the Bible says in the book of Acts that, that, um, that in Acts chapter 3, that heaven must keep Jesus in heaven until the times of refreshing or until certain scriptures be realized, then Jesus has to be kept in, kept in heaven. And one of those scriptures is Matthew 24, where it says the gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world. Not just the gospel of salvation. Thank God the gospel of salvation. Thank God that a lot of folks are getting saved because of this pandemic and because of a, a whole lot of stuff. But after salvation, then the kingdom must be demonstrated. And then when the kingdom is demonstrated, then the end will come. And so just like Jesus says, occupy till we come. Do business till we come. In other words, Keep, keep saving people. Keep witnessing the people. Keep living a life of holiness. Keep seeking my face. Keep, keep uh, reading my word and keep, um, keep praying. Keep doing the things that I've called you to do. Then, then when, when, when the rapture comes, then we won't have to worry about, well, will we make it? We won't have to be like, like those 10 virgins in Matthew 25. Five were foolish and five were wise. We will be spiritually prepared for the soon and coming king, which is Jesus. See, the Bible says five, the five that were wise always were spiritually prepared, meaning that they always was praying. They, all, they had a relationship with God. They always were reading the word. They always were seeking his face. They always was demonstrating the kingdom. So when the bridegroom came, who is Jesus Christ, they were ready. But the five foolish ones didn't make it because even though they, they were saved, you have to understand that they weren't prepared. So they weren't ready. And how do we get ready? We get ready by honoring God in our lifestyle, by honoring God in the way we live. Amen? So, last scripture is in Revelation 19, 6 through 8. It says, As I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reign, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. So we have to understand by the Christ that in order for us to get to Revelation 19, and there are people who are up there now praising God. They are, they, are those, they are those mighty clouds of witnesses that they say in Hebrews chapter 12 that are cheering us on. But we have to get ourselves ready because God is making, is making himself ready, the Bible says, for the soon to coming king, which is Jesus. But the Bible says that his wife, which is us, the church, has made herself ready. And the only way we can make ourselves ready is to be mature, is to live that life that's pleasing to him and to live a life of faith, to hear and obey his voice, to walk in our callings and our talents, to love one another as Christ has loved us through Jesus Christ. So, so that's how we honor God on this Father's Day. So again, happy Father's Day to all of y'all, but honor the Father, not just this weekend, but honor God, honor the Father every day. Honor, honor, the, honor the Father by, by how you live. How We are representatives of the kingdom of God. We are his ambassadors. So honor him in the way that you live. And then when we do that, we honor God and God will be glorified. Amen. God bless you. So and now we're going to go to the next phase. Uh, my wife is coming. So again, I just want to thank God for everyone that tuned in. And I, and I just praise our apostles, Apostles Dr. Linda Herbert and Apostle Jeff Herbert for allowing us to have this platform. And we just thank God for them and we bless them and we honor them. They are our spiritual leaders. They are our pastors. They are our apostles. So we thank God for them and we just honor them. And we wish Apostle Jeff, who was our, Apostle Jeff Herbert, who was our spiritual father, a happy Father's Day. So here's my wife, Pastor Andre. Amen, amen. amen. That was an awesome word, wasn't it? Amen. So we have um, Apostle Linda doing chat. 
and is sending us the names for the prophetic word. So I know she sent an email out. If you um, receive a prophetic word tonight, and we have about five people, we have names already that will prophesy to, um, and we don't have your email address, please um, submit it in the comment section. Then we can take a recording of this word and email it to you directly so that you can have it. You can replay it. We suggest you transcribe it, write it down so you can review it. Um, and then that way, it's something you'll have for your own personal records. Amen. So again, we'll say the names. If we don't have your email address or you've never received anything from us before, even if you have, it doesn't hurt to give us your email again. Uh, go ahead and go write it down or submit it in the comment box. And then we can definitely email the prophetic word to you. Amen? All right, so we'll go ahead and start. Okay. So our first um, that we have tonight is Ethel um, Edmund. Ethel Edmund. Amen. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Ethel Edmund. We thank you, Father, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father God, for this powerful woman of God. We, we thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in her life. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and mercy on her life. And God says that, that there's there's been a lot of... Of things that that he's doing with your life and God says that that you've been called to a mighty work that you've been called to the office of the prophetic ministry in Jesus name father office of the prophetess and God says that that he loves you and God says that that, that you've been you, you've been doing a mighty work for him and you've been reading the Word of God and you've been seeking the, the face of God and God says that in this time that 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 the time of visitation is coming where he's going to give you instructions about what what your calling is and and, and what and he's gonna give you specific instructions about about who to pray for and just it just and you are an intercessor and God says because you're an intercessor that that, that you that, that you are somebody who, who prays for the nation, that you are somebody who prays for your family and prays for people. And God says, with that I am well pleased. And God says that, that, your, that the anointing level that's on your life is going to come up in this season because God says that you've been faithful and God says you've persevered and you've endured a lot of trials and you've endured a lot of, lot, lot of tests and you've passed it with, with flying colors. And God says that because of that, the anointing, the purpose and the things that I have for you is going to rise up in this season. And God says that you've been asking me for things and asking me for, for different things in your prayers. And God says that, that I am there, that I've heard every prayer and, and, I, and I've seen what, when you've shed every tear. And God says that now is the time where, where the spirit of joy is going to come on you and even a spirit of rest is going to come on you because God says that, that he, wants to, he wants you to just settle and seek and seek his face and, and just hear and obey his voice in this season. And God says you're going to see signs, you're going to see miracles and wonders, you're going to see things that, 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 that you have not seen before. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Ethel, I just hear the Lord saying, daughter, you are one who, amen, I just hear you have an old soul. And that, what I mean by that, and I believe what the Lord is saying, is that there's just a, a wealth of wisdom that's within you. And I'm not sure if I prophesied that to you before, but you are just very wise. And even for your age, the Lord said, there's just even a greater wealth of wisdom that you have within you. And he said, but daughter, this is a season that I'm beginning to transition and line some things up. And the Lord says, there's even been a heart's desire that you had even around, the Lord says, even training, even walking in greater fullness of your calling, even greater understanding. And there's even a hunger and a thirst that you have. And the Lord said that this has even been, um, in this season, the Lord said, this has been like a refreshing water to you. And the Lord said, but even daughter, that hunger and that thirst is still there. And the Lord said, and I, I am, I hear the Lord said, and I am actually, I'm creating that. And the Lord said, because there's even more for you, daughter, and even more than what you have even understood, more than what you've even heard, more than what has even been revealed to you even in this season and the Lord said you're going to see that I'm going to begin to pour out even more revelation over the next 30 to 60 days and the Lord said that even as transition happens in the natural the Lord said you're going to see some transition occurring even in the spiritual with your daughter and the Lord said there's even going to be some new tongues there's going to be some new prayers and the Lord said and you're going to even see there's new ways of me even speaking to you as even I am beginning to train the Lord said and there's even a process of training that you're going through and the Lord said this is the season I'm going to direct your path. And the Lord said, and I'm going to direct you to the places, the Lord said, for the equipping of that you need to go to the next level, even in me and even in the callings that I have for you. 
So, daughter, this is a season, the Lord said, to be that person that has a pen and paper right by your bedside. And the Lord said, and even as you spend time with me, the Lord said, you'll start hearing even me give you in parts into revelation, into that next level. And the Lord said, and even to that right positioning, because there is a right positioning that I am aligning you to. And the Lord said, in this season, and the Lord said, it's beginning now, but it's, it's, it's like the starting, but th that starting is, uh, God is slowly kind of moving you into that place that God has for you. And the Lord said, and understand, even when I get you in that place of positioning, the flow will come like greater like never before. And I just see not only the flow of the word and the flow of the anointing, but even flow of provision. And the Lord said, because there's even some desires that you have within you. And the Lord said, and even some purpose I put in you, that provision is needed. And so the Father says, this is a season to even be the ready writer. Have your pen and paper right next to the bed. Begin to seek me in this and seek me to get the actual down and to get the direction but the Lord said and allow me to allow yourself to be pliable in this season and movable and the Lord said I fasted you with many giftings and I do hear the intercessor but I do know that the prophetic is upon you as well and the Lord said so know that in this season I'm going to be shifting you even back and forth but the Lord said it's all part of your growing it's all part of the maturing it's all part of the greater things daughter which you have asked for and what you seek within me so daughter yes with you I am well pleased I am well pleased even the lord said there's some things you've already stepped out of the boat with, and the lord said i am well pleased so father we just thank you right now lord that you will continue to bless ethel right now in jesus name lord i thank you right now father for aligning her in right positioning right now in jesus name for lord god aligning her to the places she needs to be to get the right teaching and the right training to equip her lord god to be able to walk in the fullness of the call and purpose you have over her life lord we declare a decree right now in jesus name lord that even as you align her in that right positioning, provision will come for all that you have for her. And Lord God, we just decree, Lord God, amen. We just thank you right now. For just even um Sherman at the sun to let this say even greater financial blessing in the season, Lord. We you know the need. And I just declare the windfall to open up right now in yes. Jesus' name. And I bind up every spirit of delay right now in Jesus' name. And everything that is even trying to hold up the blessings and the prosperities of her in Jesus' name, Lord God. And I thank you right now, Father, Lord, that you will just continue to pour out your wisdom, your anointing on her in Jesus' name, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you for even elevation in this season. Lord, I thank you right now. Right now for the downloads lord god in jesus name that she will receive and lord god she'll be that ready person to write and receive it and begin to move on it and lord we just thank you right now for it in jesus name we pray amen 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 and then next we have um shawnee hopper shawnee hopper shawnee hopper shawnee hopper Father, we thank you, Lord, for Shani Hopper in the name of jesus we thank you father god we thank you lord for what you're doing for what you're doing in her life in jesus name father god we thank you father god in the name of jesus father god that you are you have been her provider even even in the midst father even even in the midst and, and god says that that i've been there and i provided for you and god says i will continue to be your jehovah jireh and provide for you and and god says because you've honored me first god says that the, even even tonight that that, that you have heard this lesson and God says you under you understand about honoring and God says yes Lord I'm going to honor you because you've honored me and God says that 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 that, that you are one who who honors me with with your lifestyle that, that that you are a person who lives a holy lifestyle in in front of me and God says with that I'm well pleased and God says that, that now you are seeking me for greater revelation you are seeking me for a greater uh, uh, purpose and vision and God says that I'm going to give you that in in this season because God says that you have endured and God says that you even you you've done the footwork and you've done what I've asked and you've obeyed me even in times of famine even in times where where you you didn't know where 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 the, where, where the next dollar coming from and even when you didn't know where the, where the next provision is coming from but God says that 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 you've even given that widow's might and and God says with that I'm well pleased and God says that now I'm going to open the floodgates in your life, and not just uh, materially, but spiritually. And God says that that He's going to raise you up in this season, because God says He's well pleased with you, and God said He's well pleased on how you seek Me, because God says that you seek Me as you seek Me, with, you seek Me with all your your strength and might and your heart. God says that that He's that He's going to honor you back. 
And God says, when you seek me diligently, you will find me. And God says that that, that you hear my voice. And God says that, that that you are one who is pliable. You you are one that's 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 teachable, and you are one that that's going to be that end time remnant in these last days to honor and bless me. And God says, with you, daughter, I am well pleased. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. And Shawnee, I just hear the Lord say to the daughter, this is just a season. And the Lord said, well, I am even releasing within you, daughter, even those things that have been held back. And the Lord says there's been even seasons and periods of time. And the Lord said where the enemy has stifled you, where he's tried to control you, when he's tried to silence you. And the Lord said, and he has been restrictive, uh, and even in your past, the Lord says. And the Lord said it's just been an oppression and that the enemy has released upon you and your household and your family. And it's been an assignment that has been there for years. And the Lord said, and even though the Lord said, yes, to my daughter, you have been one who is faithful. And Lord that says, and you have been one who is righteous. And the Lord said, and even through your faithful and righteousness, there's been great pers perseverance and preservation yeah. that I have unleashed upon you and your household. The Lord said, this is a season where I am going to begin to even take the stronghold. And I'm going to begin to break the stronghold, even of that oppression. And the Lord said, even when there were seasons where you felt like you were stifled and you couldn't speak and you couldn't breathe and you couldn't say the things that you need to say. And the Lord said, but no, daughter, this is a season. And I'm unleashing that even in you. And the Lord said, there's always been a worshiper in you. And there's a great worshiper that has been even in, in, in inside you and one who worships me. And the Lord said, those have been times of great delight because I have delighted in your worship. I delight in your singing. I delight in your praise. I delight in that even in that season, you give me your whole heart. And even in that time, you just lay out your whole heart. And daughter, I and know that I love to commune with you even through that. But this is a season, daughter. I'm putting a roar in you and the Lord said and I'm unleashing a roar that's going to change atmospheres and it's going to change atmospheres in the home and it's going to change atmospheres in your work and it's going to change atmospheres all around you and the Lord said because no longer are you to sit back and even be docile in this time or even be accepted in this time but daughter this is a season to roar this is a season to war this is a season to unleash the worship and the voice and the sound the Lord says and you will see the breakthrough that will come upon you and you will see the breaking even in your house and you will see the breaking even over your mind and over the oppression and Lord says in depression that has even plagued you over the years and the Lord said this roar will not only just be a roar for you but it's a roar for the generations and the Lord said even the ones that, your, that you have birthed the Lord said needs your roar and they need you to cry out this season and they need you to begin to declare a decree and break off those things that have ensnared and try to show me that thust in that even rob you of your own breath. So we break off a Leviathan spirit. We break on the Python spirit right now in Jesus' name. And we loose, Lord God, the voice of God. We loose, Lord God, the presence of God. We loose, Lord God, the roar and the lion of the Lord in this season, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We loose, Lord God, our Sabaoth in this season. And I thank you right now, Father, that she will release, Lord God, that war and that worship, Lord God, that will change atmospheres, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you right now for angels on the assignment and I even hear Lord say there are already angels on assignment the Lord says that's even fighting mightily on your behalf. And I even just see the Lord said, there's even fighting for your offspring. And the Lord said, we are warring right now for your offspring. So daughter, this is a season not to get weary and not yeah. allow the depression or oppression to come. But this is the real season. I hear the Lord said to look up and begin to shout out yeah. those things and declare those things that be not as though they are. And yeah. the Lord said, this is a season to make the decrees. And because your word says, Lord, decree a thing and it shall be established. So the Lord said, this is a season to speak those things into existence and not allow anything else to be heard or spoken. And the Lord said, do not come in agreement with anything that is contrary to my word and contrary to the purpose and plans I have for you and your offsprings and your family. And the Lord said, this is a season to walk, step with me, daughter, as I give you revelation to walk it all out. And the Lord said, to know that there's great power and there's just great anointing I'm endowing you with in this season. 
season to begin to speak it into the atmosphere and see change. So Lord, we loose that yes. to her right now in Jesus name. We loose that of power. We loose that anointing right now in Jesus name. Awesome. We loose right now in Jesus name, the breaker anointing, the break and change atmosphere. I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to break every stronghold that's trying to uh, uh, come against her and her household, Lord God, in Jesus name. And you release, Lord God, in Jesus name, the peace of God, the love of God yes, right God. now in Jesus name and the power of God in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. And then we have um, Lynn Lou Williams. Lynn Lou Williams. Lynn Lou right. Williams. Amen. Lynn? Lynn. Okay. Lynn Lou. Father, I thank you, Lord, for uh, Lynn Lou Williams in the name of Jesus, Father God. I just thank you, Father God. And I'm hearing God says that, that I am so pleased with you. And God says that, that I, I love you. And God says that, that even in, in this season, God says that, that he's, bringing, he's bringing you he's, he's bringing you out of the miry clay, God says. And God says that there's some things in the past and, and there's some inner healing that's taking place in you as we speak in the name of Jesus. And God says that, that he is the God who heals thee. God says, God says, I am your Jehovah Rapha. And God says that I heal from the inside out. And God says that, that, that he's bringing you into some new realms of him. And God says that he's even showing you him in, in a new way. And, and God says that, that, that you are a, a person who reads my word and you are a person who understands my word. And God says that he's going to show you new revelation and new things in this season. And, and God says, as you continue to read my word, and, and God says that there's even opportunities that God says that he's going to put you in the marketplace. And, and God says that, that he's going to give you opportunities to witness and preach my word. Because God says that you have prepared yourselves. Just like in, in, the, in the case of the, of the five, um, five wise virgins, that you are spiritually preparing yourself for, for ministry. And you have prepared yourself for the soon and coming king. God says he's preparing you now and he's maturing you and, and he's, he's taking you to places where you have never seen. So God says, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. And, and God says that, that you are preparing yourself for ministry. And, and God says, continue to be humble. And God says, does my word says, if you humble yourself before me in due season, I will lift you up. So God says, with you, I am well pleased. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just lift up Lynn Lou in Jesus' name, Lord God. And I thank you right now, Father, just for strengthening her body, strengthening her mind, even in this season. I thank you right now in Jesus' name, Lord God, Father, that you're just going to continue to pour out your spirit upon her in Jesus' name, Lord God. And Lord, I just thank you right now, Father, we just declare the finances to come forth right now in Jesus' name. I thank you right now, Father, in Jesus' name, that you just open doors of opportunity. And I just even here there's just even shaman at the sun number that they say he shaman at the say he under say he under say he shaman at the say um lindu i just i i just feel like there's just been some um shaman at the sun number that they say there's been a wrong against you um and it's almost like um shaman at the say he shaman it's it's um amen i'm just gonna hear what i tell you what i hear the lord saying so, Father, I just thank you right now. So, Lindu, I just hear that there's been even a, a, a unrighteous judgment that has been made Amen. against you. Amen. And the Lord said, and this is the season I'm going to begin to turn some things around for you. And the Lord said, there's just been even some, uh, uh, sahi, sahi, some even uh, judgments or decisions that have been made to try to not to help you, but to hinder you. And the Lord said, but they haven't been made for the right reasons. And the Lord says, even that, um, I'm that they say, he's showing that they say, it's just even unrighteous. It's just, it's not right. I don't know what it is, but it's not right. And I know it's not right. And the Lord said, I'm going to begin to turn some things around. And I believe a lot, some of it has to do with your finances. I'm not sure. But the Lord said, I'm about to turn some things around for you in this season. And the Lord said, and what was done to you unjustly, the Lord said, I'm going to correct in this season. And the Lord said, you've been crying out. And the Lord said, you've even said, okay, God, I'm I'm stepping out on faith, and I'm, I'm going to trust you in this. And, and you've cried out. And the Lord said, I'm going to do some reversals. And the Lord said, there's some things that 
should have been yours, the Lord said will be yours. In Jesus' name, the Lord says. And I just feel like there's some finances that's been held up too. And the Lord said, I'm going to begin to release that. And I just, I, I just pray over whatever paperwork it is that has been unjustly done or sitting that hasn't been processed. Lord God, in Jesus' name, you begin to move in that right now in Jesus' name. And you begin to pursue that right now in Jesus' name. And I declare favor upon her. And the Lord said, there's going to be even supernatural favor over you in this season. And what doors once were locked, daughter, I'm going to tell you to try again. Mm -hmm. I hear the Lord say, go back and look again. This is a season the Lord says, don't accept what is not of, uh, if you know in your spirit it is wrong, I hear the Lord say, do not accept it. Do not accept unrighteous justice. But the Lord said, pursue. And the Lord said, continue to go after it. And the Lord says, and no daughter, look again and you'll see. And the Lord said that the, the situation is going to turn. So I thank you right now, Father, in Jesus' name. That I, I just shamanatha say he shamanatha. This is like a word of knowledge and instruction. You're supposed to go back and do it again. Don't accept the no. Go back. And I just declare and decree that the, the door will open, whatever that is. And so, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, that you give her wisdom and revelation, even what you're speaking of, because he hasn't given me everything, but just know I hear that you need to do it again. And so, Father, we thank you right now, Lord, that she's going to follow the instructions. And, Lord, you're going to give her, in the, let her know, even in her knower, Lord God, in Jesus' name, what you're speaking of. And give her revelation, Lord God, of what you're speaking of. And I declare, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that reversal will come and that replevin will come and that which has been owed to her will come in Jesus name and Lord we declare healing over her body right now in Jesus name and I hear the Lord say there's even a great healing that's even coming Amen. to you and the Lord said the fire of my anointing is coming upon your body even in this moment and the Lord said you're going to receive and you're going to feel my healing anointing overtake you in Jesus name and the Lord said I'm working some things out even in your body and the Lord said and what was the one thought that would not return or even dead. The Lord said, I'm going to bring back even to life. And the Lord said, I'm speaking even to your systems right now in Jesus name. And Lord God, I just thank you right now, Father. Lord, Lord, for her whole endocrine system, Lord, the blood levels, everything, Lord God, we just thank you right now, Father, that everything will be normalized, Lord God, in Jesus name. I declare full mobility right now in Jesus name. I thank you right now, Father, Lord, that you're releasing your healing the anointing over her even this very moment even in her house yeah. as you amen. receive it i just release it to her in jesus name we pray amen, amen. thank you lord. amen and so father Praise we just god. thank you lord that she's going to give the revelation she's going to get the wisdom and lord god pursue that thing lord god which is rightfully hers and we declare it will be yes. in jesus name we pray amen. You, amen amen okay and now we have krista Eisen bees, I believe. Eisen bees. And we apologize if, if, we, don't get, if we don't get the name Sorry. exactly correct. <laughs> so this is Krista. Krista. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Krista. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We, we, we just thank you for her, and we just thank you for the anointing. And God says that there is a, a powerful, special anointing that's in your life. There's a powerful calling that, that, that he has for you. And, and God says that you were one that were dedicated to me even for birth. And God says that 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 you were one that was prayed for, and you, you were one that was dedicated, and you were one that that whoever prayed for you and your I don't know who it was, but somebody prayed for you and, and somebody lifted you up and someone was constantly interceding for you. And God says that I've heard that and God says I I, I don't forget uh people who intercede for 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 their for their generation and god says that that, that you are one who have a mighty calling and you are one that, that that's going to affect your generation and god says um with you i'm well pleased and god says that that, that you are one that that's going to preach my word and teach my word and, and god says you've been called to the office of the prophetic and god says that that you've been called to a mighty calling and, and god says that that, that you're going to read my word with simplicity and, and God says that, that you're going to be one that's going to have power and, and you're going to be the, 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 that effective witness for me. 
as you go out in the marketplace and, and you're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. And there's even, uh, God says, the, the, uh, the uh, evangelistic uh, thrust is on you too because you, you are someone who loves for people to get saved. And you are, you're, going to, you're going to be someone who's going to be snatching uh, people out of the kingdom of the darkness into the kingdom of light. And, and God says that he's put that in your heart. And even for the youth, God, God says that, that you are one who loves the youth. You, you are one who, who, who wants to see the, the, even the next generation succeed and know God as their Savior. So God says, daughter, with you are well pleased. And God says to continue on your journey that you are doing. And God says that even, even though that, that sometimes it, it, the road may, may get rough and sometimes the enemy may come against you, God says, don't be weary and well doing. Just continue to go on and continue to do what I've called you to do. And God says that, that you're going to see the blessings. And God, see, God says you're going to see the reward and, and, and come to manifest in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Chris, I just hear the Lord saying, daughter, you are a great intercessor. And this is a season, Lord, so I'm going to even reveal some even greater uh, prayer, even uh, prayers for you in the season. And the Lord said, but you have been praying even in this uh, about all that is going on right now. And the Lord said, and continue to be that one who intercedes. And the Lord said, but there is a greater call. There is a greater anointing. And I even bear witness with uh, Pastor Sean. He's talking about even as a young child. And the Lord said, but there's even a miracle anointings on your life. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, and is I desire for you to do the miracles, daughter. And the Lord said, and amen, there's been even just a pull and there's just been even a, a new level of faith that I'm taking you to that even will begin to even manifest the Lord says even greater even in this season. And the Lord said not only through your prayers, not only through your worship, Lord God but the Lord said but even begin to do the exploits and do those great things even in my name, daughter. And the Lord said this is a season just to kind of be a little bit bolder in me and to step out, the Lord says, and begin to uh, speak those things and do those things the Lord said and, and with that faith you match the faith to expect to believe it and you will receive it daughter and the Lord says so this is a season daughter I'm just even raising you up even the more and the Lord said and this is a season daughter that I'm even giving greater even revelation to even about the cause and the purposes I have and even for the things that I have for you even for the nations Amen. and the Lord said and so yes daughter this is a, a national call even that I am calling you to and the Lord said and so the, even the prayers even the, the anointings the Lord said and even the, the giftings are even for the nations and so Lord says that begin to even think of those things and Lord said begin to even seek me even for the next steps in the next direction I just do believe that you're going to do some traveling and there's some great things that's going to come and I just I hear the Lord said you're going to amen it's going to be a joy to you but the Lord said there's just a mighty work that you're going to do even um, in him and through him even as you embark on these different travels and so Father we just release that to her yes. in this season we release oh God that intercessor's anointing we release the Lord God in Jesus' name, the gift of miracles right now in Jesus' name, for it to begin to increase like never before. And Lord, I thank you right now. You even said that you're increasing her faith, Lord God, to believe and receive it, Father God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you right now, Father Lord, that I just, I even just the Lord said, I, I just declare the visitation. Mm. I declare the visitation right now in Jesus' name so that God could just even impart in you even a greater understanding and a greater understanding of his love for you, but a greater understanding of your purpose in him. Yes. And Lord, I thank you right now, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, though for all that's going to happen that she's going to do, and Lord God, that you're covering in her, protecting her, even in this season, even protecting her family right now in this season, and Lord, we just thank you right now, Father, for all that you're going to do and all the glory that you're going to receive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then, uh, let's see, stop. Okay, Cherie Sibbles. Cherie Sibbles, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for Cherie right now. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you for this powerful woman of God. We thank you for this powerful prophetic warrior. And I'm hearing God says, yes, you are a warrior. And God says that you are a warrior for me. You are a warrior for my kingdom. And God says that, 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 that you, have won, you have one who have gone through many battles. But God says that you've come through them with pure gold. And God says that, that, that you are a person of... of you are, you are one of person of courage, and God says that you will fight the battles for my sake. And God says that, that you have a prophetic calling. And God says that, that, that you love me with all your heart. And God says you are one who seeks me, and you are one who intercedes for, for your family. And God says with that, I am well pleased. And God says that because you have laid down your life for, for the sake of others, God says that I'm going to bless you. 
Because God says that when you lay down your life for others and when you sacrifice yourself for others, God says that I will in turn bless you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for her. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for, for her life of holiness, for, for, for just her life of service towards you, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. And we just pray for her body right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that she is healed from the top of her head to the sole of her feet in the, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And we just come against any spirit of infirmity right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. And we just speak to that infirmity. We will buke it. We cast it into the sea in the name of Jesus so it cannot resurface. We thank you, Father God, for the blood and stripes of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that she will walk in divine health from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. We thank you, Lord, that with long life will you satisfy her and show her your, show her your salvation. Amen. And we just thank you, Father God, for her. We thank you, Lord, for her ministry, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that she is a ministry gift gift right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. And we just praise you and honor you. And God says, with you, I am well pleased in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I mean, I just hear the Lord saying that, daughter, you've been on the battlefield for a long time. And I hear what the Lord says, that you've been on the battlefield before you even knew what a battlefield was, before you knew there mm -hmm. was a battlefield. And the Lord said, and you've been battling, you know, even through your youth, even through your, your, your young young adult years. And, and the Lord said, and it's just been even, uh, the Lord says, just been a war in your spirit. And the Lord said, that in your heart, you've always known what was right. And the Lord said, and you've always fought for what you knew was right. And the Lord said, and even if you didn't have a full understanding, the Lord said that your spirit knew and that there was even even at that young age, the Lord said that there was just even a, 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 a conviction within you, even about the things of me, daughter. And even if it wasn't named me, you just knew. And the Lord said, so know that my call has been on you for a long time. And the Lord said, and even the word says, I knew you before I formed you in the womb. Amen. And the Lord said, so yes, daughter, it has been a call. The, and even a destined, destiny, the Lord God says, that I have had on you. And Lord, daughter, you are one who is a warrior. And the Lord said, you only war not only in the spirit, but you've war in the natural. And the Lord says, but you have a warrior anointing. And the Lord said, and you're not afraid. And the Lord said, to go in and be able to do what you need to do, daughter. And the Lord says, so I put that even anointing in you. And the Lord says, so this is a season, daughter, where you are even battling even more than you battled before. And I just even hear the Lord says, it's been a long five to ten year road of just even warfare and just battle and warfare and battle and the Lord said and know that daughter amen I hear the word that do not grow weary and well doing amen. because uh, in Shemonetha say in Shemonetha in due season you will reap if you not faint and the Lord said and this is a season the Lord says that and you're going to continue to press and the Lord said Shemonetha said I just see uh, and you just pushing a rock and the Lord said but you know for a long time you felt like you've had this by yourself and the Lord said, but this is a season. The Lord said, you're going to look to your left, you're going to look to your right, and you're going to see that there's been people, and there's angels, there's everyone on the assignment that's pushing this for you. And the Lord said, and no daughter has been a press. The Lord said, you will feel the lightness and the load, and you will begin to feel the lightness of your body. And the Lord said, and where there was much even turmoil and much stress that wreaked havoc over your body and over your mind, the Lord said, in this latter days, you will receive peace, and you will know the peace. And the Lord said, because even the Lord says, as you sought me and as you continue to seek me, the Lord said, I've continued to even pour in more peace. But the Lord said, this is a new peace that I'm even giving you today. Amen. And the Lord said, this is a new revelation I'm even giving you today. And the Lord said, I'm even breaking off some veils. And the Lord said, and even some things that the enemy has tried to hinder you from seeing even this day. But the Lord said, there's a clarity coming like never before. And that clarity, the Lord says, is even understanding who you are in the spirit and who your authority is and what power you actually have and to begin to walk in that authority and walk in that power like never before. And the Lord said, and you're going to see that there's a greater anointing rising up even in you in this season. And it's almost like you didn't know, you sensed it, but revelation has come and now you're able to name it. And the Lord's name is written upon you. Amen. And so now you can receive it because you know Lord, that you know that you know who you are in me, daughter. 
and it's been even a walk the Lord says and the Lord says well you said I know God I know I'm I know something and the Lord said but I've named it and yes daughter I've called you to be that prophetic warrior even for your family even for this generation and the Lord said you've had a heart for this generation and a heart for these children for years and now you understand that that warrior anointing is for you to begin to pray declare and even fight on their behalf and the Lord said that even in your own house the Lord said there's a breaking that's coming and there's a breaker anointing that I'm even sending in your house and what has been stood for years will break and the Lord said there's going to be a softening and the Lord said the father's love and the amen I just feel like there's a peace that's going to surpass all understanding that's going to come into that place like never before and the Lord said there's just going to be a release of an inner joy in your spirit in your house in your finances in every area I just hear the Lord said your ladder is so much greater your ladder is so much greater and there's just going to be a testimony that you're going to say and that you're going to share of all that you've endured to even get to this point but the Lord said know that even that testimony I uh, you just hear the Lord said well, it's going to include the releasing of healings and the releasing of miracles because there's a miracle work that's going to be done in your household not only over you but your family the Lord says there's a miraculous healing because there's been a degenerative a spirit of infirmity that has intact the whole household and I hear the Lord saying, and it's even attacking even your children, and it's trying to come against them. So we just thank you right now, Father, that in that warrior anointing, God's going to give you revelation on how to come against that spirit of infirmity and root it out of your house, root it out of that bloodline, and we just come against it right now. So we root out every spirit of infirmity right now in Jesus' name from the generation, from every open door of any ancestor that let it in. Lord, we lose forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness. And Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, that you're going to seal it right now and it ends today in Amen. Jesus name and healing begins today in Jesus name and it will manifest today in their bodies in Jesus name Lord God in their minds in their spirit in their soul in Jesus name Lord God and I thank you for financial breakthrough in Jesus name Lord God I thank you right now father we bring off every form of stress and oppression in Jesus' name. And the burdens, Lord God, every false burden, we break it off right now in Jesus' name. And we lose the peace of God and the love of God over them. And I thank you right now, Father, that she's going to rise up, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father. Lord, that she will walk in the fullness of her calling as you release that to her this day, as you release the anointing this day, as you release the revelation this day. I declare and decree it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, you release the healing this day. Lord, we just thank you for it and we seal it in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Okay. And then our last one is Oh Hey Chris A. <laughs> oh Hey Chris A. <laughs> oh Hey. Oh Hey. Oh Hey. That's her name on the on okay. Facebook. Oh, hey, so that's probably Chris not her name. A. Okay. But we don't know her. Well, amen. Maybe it's just Chris A. So, Chris, okay. Well, Father, Chris we thank a. you. <laughs> Father, we thank you for <laughs> oh hey in Jesus' name, Father God. Father God, we just praise you. We just honor you for her. We, we thank you for her life. And and God says that 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 you are a a life worth worth honoring because God says that that you are one who lays down your life for 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 the brethren and god says that you you are one who Amen. who who seeks me and who seeks me for purpose and you seek me for vision and god says that that in these days in, in these in these days of of unrest you you are you are you are the one who's on the front line praying and you are ones on, on, who are on the one who are on the front line seeking my face for direction in jesus name so we just thank you, Lord, for her. We just thank you, Lord, for, for the vision and calling that's in her life. In Jesus' name, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And again, you, you are another warrior for my kingdom. And God says that you, you are one who seeks my kingdom. And you, are, and, and you are one who seeks my righteousness. And God says, because you've done that, God says, my word says that the things will be added. So, and, and God says that, that you are a kingdom demonstrator. And God says you, you are the one. Who, who's going to um, usher in that, that, that kingdom anointing and you are the one that, that's going to preach my gospel of the kingdom in, in the name of Jesus and you are that remnant you are that remnant warrior that God is going to use in, in, these, in these last days be, be, before Jesus comes 
to get his bride and to get his church. And God says, daughter, with you, I'm well pleased. And God says, even even the, the your, your um, time in your personal prayer time in your secret closet. And, and God says that he's doing something even in your family. And God says, daughter, don't you know that, that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he promised that he will save you and your whole household. Yeah. So we just, we just, in the name of Jesus, believe, we just decree and declare that her whole, her whole household will be saved. And we thank you, Lord for her calling and her anointing and her, her, her that you have put in her life in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And Chris, hey, I just hear the Lord saying, "Now, daughter, this there's just even been a, a, an eternal joy that God has even deposited within you." And the Lord said, "There's just even this great joy." Lord says, "The daughter I have even put in you, even not only for you, but just even for those around you." And it's even an infectious joy. And the Lord said, "And in this season, daughter, I'm going to begin to rev it up even the more." The Lord says, "And this is a season, daughter, not to become even weary or oppressed, but the Lord said, begin to even rely on that and just even revel in my joy." Revel in that place of peace even in me even as I give you a new peace and Lord God says and even put a greater peace upon you and the Lord said this is a season the Lord said well I'm just even communion with you and there's a great a, a, a time of the Lord said of intimacy between you and him and the Lord said well I am just even uh, uh so he said enjoying that time of worship enjoying that time of intimacy enjoying that time of just even meditation but the Lord said there's even a time that I'm going to begin to impart some things even to you in this season and the lord said and no daughter i do hear the prayers of your heart and the lord said and even as you cry cry out, cry out to me the lord says no i am delivering you and i'm delivering and answering every prayer and the lord said and i am imparting in you that peace and that wisdom and that joy the lord says to continue the lord says for you to even strengthen you even in this season and the lord says there's just even a great wealth of understanding that even you're seeking and the Lord said in Revelation that even as you begin to commune with me, the Lord said, I will begin to give you that understanding. I will give you that revelation. I will give you that thing that you seek. And the Lord says, and I will begin to even go deeper. And the Lord said, even into the, the, the depths of things that you have asked and even that you are seeking in, in me. So this is a season, daughter, just to commune with me. This is a season, the Lord says, to begin to just pour your heart out to me, begin to allow myself, Lord God, and my joy and my peace to just overtake you in this season, the Lord said, and just even Lord says, Shamaratha say, He Shamaratha say, just continue to seek me in all that you do, seek me in all that you are, and seek me, the Lord said, in every way. And the Lord said, and know the daughter, I will be found. And the Lord said, This is a season that I am even, I, I feel the Lord said, I'm just making myself even more accessible to you. So there's just even been a season of just questioning, a season of wonder, just a season of seeking. And the Lord said, And daughter, this is going to be a great season of revelation, even coming to to you. So Lord, we release that to her right now in Jesus' name. We release the great revelation. We release right now in Jesus' name those times of great intimacy, those times of great communion right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you right now, Father, that you're stirring that joy that is within her. Lord God, in Jesus' name, the joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take it away. It's an inner joy and a peace and that the Lord is beginning to stir within you. And Lord, I just thank you right now, Father, Lord, that it will overtake her, Lord God, and even those around her. And Lord, we just lose that peace and that blessing upon her right now. I thank, thank you, Lord God, that you already said you've heard every prayer, yes. Lord God, in Jesus' name, and the petitions that are upon her heart. Amen. I thank you right now, Father, Lord, that you're working mightily on her behalf. And I thank you right now, just surrounding her with that place of peace in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So that was it. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. All right so... Amen. So before we uh, wrap up, I just want to, I never want to leave without giving, giving anybody a chance who do not know Jesus to give your life to Jesus. Now, as, as you know, and, and you see the time that we're living in, we all need Jesus. So if you have not confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the time. Okay, so just, um, if you haven't confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to, just repeat after me, just say, Father God, Forgive me of all my sins. I come to you and I make you my Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And I believe with all my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And because of this confession and salvation, I am saved. And I will live for you until, the, until all my days are up. 
In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. 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 So just before we close out, just want to give you all a couple of announcements. Um, the first is we are definitely having a men's group. It's a men's Bible study. It's on Saturday, June the 27th at 7 o'clock. The information for the Zoom link will be in the newsletter. So if you um, are a gentleman on the line or if you are someone who knows a gentleman who needs to participate and you are not receiving our newsletters, please make sure you put your email address in the comments so that we can send that out to you. We also are going to have in July, I believe July the 18th, a prayer mm -hmm. conference. And so more information is going to come out about that in the newsletter. But I want to give you a save the date. It's July 18th. It's a virtual prayer conference. But there will also be time for prayer and ministries for families. Amen. Amen. So you definitely want to save the date. Information will come out in our newsletter. A little bit more details about that um, and how to sign up and register so please make sure you save that date, Saturday, July the 18th. And I believe we start in the morning at about mm -hmm. um, 9 or a little earlier. And so we go throughout the day. So we would love for you to participate in um, any portion or of the entire conference. It will be mostly on Zoom. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then I think um, our regular services, if you're not aware, this is our Friday night table talk, which we host every Friday at 730. And it's not we, but the Covenant Life Church. Um, usually our apostles, Apostle Linda and Apostle Jeff, our, our, our leadership are doing the table talk. We also have on Sundays at one o'clock our prophetic class with Prophet Shayla. It's also via Zoom. If you're interested or you think you're called to the prophetic or you have a prophetic anointing or you just want to be, amen, exercised in the gift of prophecy because the word says that we should all desire to prophesy, mm -hmm. then that's the class that you need to go to. And she does activation. So that's via Zoom on Sundays at 1 p.m. And then we have our regular Sunday service at 2.30. Now, the great news is that we'll be back in the church starting this Sunday However, it's only 10 people who are allowed because those are still the restrictions with the, I guess, phase one of yes. opening up in Virginia. So although we'll be back in the church, it will just be the uh, sound team, worship team, and our media team that's going to be there live streaming. So you will continue to live stream on Facebook on Sundays um, at for our 2.30 service until, uh, I guess, they open phase two and allow everybody back in the church. Amen. So still please join us on Facebook at 2.30. The background will just look a little different because mm -hmm. we'll be actually um, live streaming from the sanctuary. And then I believe lastly, not lastly, on Mondays, mm -hmm. I believe we still have our discipleship class. So please tune in. It's been really great. It's been on the prophetic. And so if you can, it's 8 o'clock on Monday via Facebook. And then Tuesdays, we have prayer tabernacle. So we all need prayer. We all like to pray. Even if you don't want to pray, you can join the call and just listen in. And you can also just, you know, join with us in the spirit. Amen. And just come in agreement with the prayers that's being spoken over the phone. But prayer tabernacle is also on Tuesdays at 730. We do have people call in who have personal prayer requests. And that's fine. We take them as well. So please let us know. I mean, please join us on Tuesdays at 730 for prayer. Amen. Amen. I think that's it. That is it. Well, Again, I just want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day and enjoy this whole weekend. And Sunday, honor the Father. Just don't honor him on Sunday. Honor him every day. But especially uh, this Sunday, you're going to take time out to honor our Father God, our Abba Father. So we just thank you, Lord. So, so yeah. we just let's mm -hmm. pray out. Well, and then also, okay. again, happy Juneteenth to yes. everyone. Amen. And definitely from Covenant Life Church and the Apostles. You know, we hope everyone has a... Happy Juneteenth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All, All right. right. So we're going, pray. we're going to pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this night, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we will honor the King. We will honor God, our Father. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus, Jesus, our Savior, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he was resurrected so we can have eternal life. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that resides in us to teach us and to live within us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that we will honor we, we will honor the Father God by submitting our lives to Jesus Christ and by listening to, to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit daily. 
in Jesus name Father God and as we go in Jesus name Father God we decree and declare that we are protected against this virus by the 91st Psalm in Jesus name Father God we thank you Lord that no 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 spirit of infirmity no sickness or disease will come down our dwelling in Jesus name a thousand shall fall at, at one side and ten thousand at our right hand but it shall not come down our dwelling in Jesus name Father God and we just thank you we just honor you we just praise you Father God in Jesus name Father God we thank you Father God for being in our lives Father God we put you first in all that we do and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with y'all. God bless you and thanks for watching. Amen. We Good night. You. Amen.